Blade Runner, Liam Malone, has won his second gold medal in Rio, smashing the record of Paralympian Oscar Pistorius. The 22-year-old who won his first gold in the 200 metres, a silver in the 100 metres earlier this week, finished first in the 400 metres this morning. Um, but Liam Malone's road to the Olympics hasn't always been easy. His story was first told in 2013 by Christchurch Broadcasting School students Lizette Raymer and Mark McCarthy. At the time, Liam was 19. He had prosthetics, but they weren't strong enough to support his running dreams. Lizette and Mark's documentary was called A Life Without Limbs, and with their generous permission, this is Liam Malone's remarkable story. I was born with both of my fibular bones missing in each leg. Um, which pretty much meant that there was no stability in either of my limbs. So up until 18 months old, I was learning to walk on the inside of my limbs, basically on the inside of my ankle, which was near impossible to say the least. So at 18 months old, my parents made the decision to have both my feet amputated, and since then I've been walking on prosthetic limbs. But getting the true story out of Liam is never an easy task. When I'm always meeting new people, I always spin the biggest yarns, go for, go for stories like I lost my legs to a great white shark off Seal Island in South Africa and lost it in like a glacier or a frostbite and just anything really extreme because people kind of have to believe it, you know, just because they wouldn't expect someone to have like two artificial limbs. So they kind of just believe it and they're all amazed for this period of time. And then I tell them they're just like, oh, such a dick. His chance to have some fun before he has to answer the usual list of questions. All the basic things, can you drive, can you ride a bike, can you run? So they think it's much more of a disadvantage of, than it really is. They kind of like make me out to be like a paraplegic type of thing where I can't really do anything, but it's not like that at all. So they're always like really surprised I can. Especially surprised when they hear that since a young age, Liam's life has been filled with sport. Cricket, rugby, snowboarding, downhill mountain bike racing, um, everything. I can play everything. And any hiccups that do occur are handled with style. When I was 14, playing out in Mochiweka, um, just for like a novelty joke, went to convert the ball and went to kick the ball and instead of kicking the ball, my leg flew off in front of like a good couple of hundred people. Everyone just like applauded and then one of the boys went and grabbed my leg and chucked it back on and then I kind of like clapped it off. By 14 years old, Liam's talent in sport had led him to compete on the international sprinting track alongside other disabled athletes. However, he soon realised this wasn't for him. The main reason was because I didn't like competing against other disabled people. Um, and it kind of like, made me need to accept that I was disabled. I don't consider myself disabled at all. So, and I'm a very competitive person, so I love kind of pushing myself to compete against able-bodied people. Because I'm able to do everything, so why would I consider myself disabled? Ever since I was growing up, kind of just playing sport with able-bodied um, children has just kind of given me a better perspective to kind of think that I'm not disabled, as well as like taking on um, individual sports compared to like team sports like mountain biking, snowboarding, where I'm like competing against myself has always been really important as well. And is there anything you wish you could do that you can't? No, not yet. What Liam does want, however, is a pair of limbs suitable for sport. His current prosthetics aren't strong enough to handle the demands he puts on them. Basically made just so I can walk, like, just walk, that's it, forwards and backwards. When the weight comes down, I can kind of feel like the foot flexing, like if there's going to be too much weight coming down on the foot, I can kind of feel the pressure like coming like more forwards on my limb. I would love to get some, just to get some limbs I'd be able to do sport in. It's a request he has successfully pitched to his prosthetic specialist, Graham Flanagan, who has fitted Liam's limbs since the very beginning. I did make those ones, yes. Those are his very first ones? Very first ones. Not easy when you've got a child who's thrashing around. Since then, Graham has made Liam countless pairs of prosthetics. His current ones, worth $12,000, help him to walk with ease. We have a carbon fibre section within the foot which goes right through to the toes and through to the heel and the foot is designed to bend and act as naturally as possible to mimic normal walking. Despite it being an extremely rare condition, now, thanks to Liam, it is one Graham is very familiar with. So the fibula is the bone that runs down the outside of the leg and it actually stabilises the ankle. So Liam was born without that bone. What they did was actually uh, grafted the heel section onto the end of the stump. So when they took out all the, the foot, they then took the heel, because that's a nice strong bit of skin, and 
sutured it onto the bottom of the stump here. But lately weight bearing on the stumps has become difficult for Liam. After as little as 20 minutes walking, he experiences a numbing pain, something surgeons are now looking into. The bottom bit of the heel has slipped around to the side possibly and they're thinking about reshaping it, putting it on the bottom to bear the weight more. The surgery would help make carrying his own weight less painful, but it wouldn't stop Liam's prosthetics from struggling under the extra weight he puts on them at the gym. If you do weights, you start to overstress the feet because they're just not designed for that. However, if we made the feet strong enough to take the weight, they'd be so stiff he wouldn't be able to walk on them. By doing weights, you're overstressing the, the carbon fibre and then the carbon fibre will start to um, delaminate. And that's not the only issue Liam encounters when going for a workout. So when I was 14, joined the gym for the first time and had the personal trainer kind of taking me around, showing me all the like different machines, etc. And he came to calf raises and then it, I was just like, there's going to be a slight problem here. And he's like, what's wrong? Um, and I was like, oh, I don't have feet. Eh? And he's like, you what? You don't, have, you don't have feet? And I was like, yeah, don't have feet. I eh? like, showed him, he's just like, oh my God, man. So awkward. Awkward moments like these are something Liam's good friends, Georgia and Alice, have learned to laugh at. I just opened his wardrobe oh. and there sitting with there was just a foot. <laughs> and I was, we just absolutely lost it. We were like, what's this here for? He was like, oh, you know, just a spare foot in case I need it. Like, just his foot. And then he was being really annoying. So we went into his room and sort of like took his foot, <laughs> took his foot and like hung it on the door. Oh my god, you're the worst as well. Please. Take the piss out of me completely, which is awesome because I wouldn't have it any other way. So Yeah, the way that he is about it is the best way to be because he can't it's been like that his whole life and he can't change it. So his attitude towards it is amazing, I think. But of course there has been rough patches. There's been points where I've been kind of down about it, but not really. It's kind of just to do with other factors that are happening around and then you think about it and it's like, oh life's so bad. So when I was 12, my mum was diagnosed with cancer, and she was kind of like the biggest inspiration in my life up until the day she died. So that was it, yeah. She always just kind of gave me a positive outlook on life. She was always there for me, um, especially during like growing up in my school years. So uh, I don't even know how to explain how I deal with it. I kind of just have to accept it. There's no real other way to do it apart from thinking about life could be worse. I could be a paraplegic in a wheelchair and to make it the most of what I got, use it as an opportunity rather than a disadvantage type of thing. Use it as an opportunity rather than a disadvantage. That young man has gone on and won two golds and one silver at the Rio Paralympics. That documentary was made for the Christchurch Broadcasting School by a couple of students who were there at the time, Lizette Raymer and Mark McCarthy, as we said before uh, we put it to wear. Lizette has gone in and she's now a reporter for... Uh, uh, TVNZ for their breakfast program. One of their classmates, Alex Ashton, is a reporter for us. So all the young people uh, who were involved in that documentary are doing tremendously well, and we thank them for permission to use their work.